grow the plants, deconstruct them, and convert their energy into sustainable, low-carbon fuels. Researchers at the U.S. Department of Energy's Joint Bioenergy Institute, referred to as JBay, are looking at each of these steps in new ways to find a better strategy for getting biofuels out of the lab and into the marketplace. What this technology represents is a significant step forward in achieving the cost reductions necessary for commercial competitiveness in biofuels, which has always been uh, of concern to not only us as a research team, but to the world at large. Can we ever make enough to be enough? At JBay, workers from six institutions with a broad range of expertise are looking to biofuels to meet the increasing need for transportation fuels without the carbon emissions that contribute to greenhouse gas buildup and climate change. Challenges include finding the best sustainable plant material or biomass and the most efficient methods to extract optimum levels of sugars needed for synthesis into fuels. Current technologies involve enzymes to deconstruct biomass, but JBay's novel approach begins with switchgrass, eliminates enzymes, and uses ionic liquids, salts that are liquids rather than crystals, at room temperature. The current state of the, uh, the art, if you will, in biofuels is pretty much derived uh, from pulp and paper industry. It really dilute acids, dilute bases, you pretreat the biomass, uh, you then have to add enzymes to liberate the sugars from the biomass and then you ferment them into fuel. The real game changer that we're trying to realize is you take the biomass that's grown for biofuel production and then you expose it to a different pretreatment environment that will liberate the sugars on its own. So you eliminate one of the most costly steps in the biofuel production scenario right now, which is the enzyme cost. What we're doing here is trying to use a very new kind of solvent, an ionic liquid, uh, that really has only been around since uh, 2002, 2003. It's able to completely dissolve biomass and break it into its constituent polymers. And that's a real advance uh, uh, relative to any of the other approaches that have been tried over the years. The breakthrough is, as with all things, multidisciplinary in nature. It starts with um, a well-known phenomenon in polysaccharide chemistry with acidolysis, where you take dilute acids and polysaccharides and you heat them up rapidly enough so that they spontaneously depolymerize into the monomers. Essentially, you add the acid into the ionic liquid, it breaks down the biomass in situ, and so you have monomeric sugars and you reduce your biomass. So the problem therein lies that both the ionic liquid and the sugars are soluble in water, so recovering the sugars at that point becomes very difficult. Um, so we did a lot of research into different ways to do this, and we found a way where we could extract the sugars into an organic phase, which is immiscible with the ionic liquid, and therefore remove the sugars from the ionic liquid, and then you just strip them back into an aqueous phase, which you can then send to the fermentation. And it eliminates the need of any costly separation activities. It's a simple liquid-liquid extraction technique. So it really enables flow through continuous processing, which in uh, biofuels, just like refining, uh, continuous operations are always substantially more, more effective than batch operations. Another factor important to the team is the impact on the environment. Their extraction technique enables the recovery and recycle of the ionic liquid itself and has other advantages. All this was produced through the washing of biomass with water to make it amenable to enzymatic digestion. Um, and we can actually eliminate a lot of these wash steps. And water is a very valuable commodity also. And by saving water, we can you know, do a great deal of benefit towards the environment. Contributing to the team's success is the all-inclusive design of the JBay Center. Under one roof, workers can investigate the growth of model crops, better plant-to-sugar conversion methods, and more efficient ways of turning the sugar into biofuels. Further progress requires scaling up their technology and looking to partnerships with processing and refining industries, work the team is confident they can do. So we do it in this reactor and then we feed the acid in through one of the ports here. We know the biomass we can get at a certain price which should make it economically attractive to convert the sugar to fuel. The hard part is getting the sugar out of that biomass. So this process actually provides a step to do that in a very new and we think potentially economically very attractive way. 
Uh, we're likely only to see sort of incremental changes in many of the other techniques that have been developed. So this could be a, a step change, if you like, uh, in the economic ability to do this. This could be something that's scalable, marketable, and commercial. Uh, and that's really the trick. You have to find that perfect storm of uh, innovative science and technology, engineering principles, and scalability to really make an impact in energy and fuels. If we can take it to where we think it should be, it can be uh, very impactful.